Alrighty, so in order to begin to build our app, we first of all need to upgrade our page to the new responsive engine. And in order to do that, we need to click on this responsive tab here and then click on the button that says upgrade responsive beta. And then after the page has been upgraded to the new responsive engine, we first of all want to have a look at the property editor of the actual page. So to do that, I'll go ahead and double click on the page. And as you know, all bubble elements will have all these three tabs within the property editor. But the property editor of the actual page is a bit different in terms of its content. As you can see, we have the page title and other basic settings you can see here. And then within the layout tab, we have the container layout options. So as you can see, we have basically four container layout options that we can choose from in order to make our page responsive. So currently it's on the fixed container layout and fixed means that it's not responsive, but the rest of the three options are responsive. So let's quickly have a brief discussion about all these different types of container layouts. So within the bubble responsive engine cheat sheet, you can see that we have different container layouts laid out here. We have the fixed container layout aligned to parent, the row or the column. Now the fixed container layout basically means that every child element will be positioned anywhere where you place it within the parent group or the parent container. But of course, as the name suggests, the fixed container layout is not responsive, rather it is fixed and all the child elements will be positioned at the specific position, regardless of whether the page gets bigger or smaller. But now let's talk about the responsive container layouts and let's start with the align to parent container layout. So the align to parent container layout basically means that a child element will be aligned or fixed to one of the nine responsive positions. And as you can see within the screenshot, we have nine positions in total. We have the top left, we have the top center, and we also have the top right and so forth. And within this example right here, we can see that this orange block has been placed on the left center and this orange block has been placed on the right center. And if this main group were to reduce in size, then all these elements will also respond accordingly. So it is a responsive container layout. Then we also have the row container layout. And here basically the child elements inside the container or the parent line up horizontally from left to right. And lastly, we have the column container layout. And here, all the child elements inside the container or parent line up vertically from bottom to top or top to bottom. Now to briefly see a quick example of what we just talked about, let's go ahead and change the container layout of the actual page to align to parent. And I'll go ahead and place a group within the parent page. And as you can see, we have all these nine positions where we can go ahead and place our group. So I'll place it here. And as you can see within the property editor of this specific child element, we can go ahead and actually change the position or alignment of the actual child element, as you can see here. So that's how that works. So in order to see this group properly, I'll just change its color to something else so that we can see it more clearly. And another thing that we want to discuss within the layout tab is the margins. So margins basically allow you to control the spacing outside the border of the element. So for example, we can set the left margin to 10. And as you can see, we have 10 pixels between the border of the page and the border of the element. And if we were to change the bottom border to say 20 pixels, you can see that the spacing is now 20 pixels between the page and the border of the element. So that's basically how margins work. And another thing that we can talk about is padding. So I'll just place the text element within this group in order to make an example of that. And then I'll go ahead and remove the style. And as you can see here, we have the vertical padding as well as the horizontal padding. Now padding actually controls the spacing within the border of the element. So currently our vertical and horizontal padding is set to zero. So let's just change this to text so that we can clearly see what we're working with. 
and I'll go ahead and center the text vertically like that. Now, since the pattern controls the spacing within the borders of the element, you will see that when we change the vertical or horizontal padding, then the spacing between the actual text and the border of the element will change. But before we change the padding, let me quickly change the layout of this group to something more responsive, like the row, for example. So now, when I go ahead and change the padding, the vertical padding rather to let's say 20 you can see that the actual text now has more space vertically within the border of the text element and then when we change the horizontal padding to let's say 50 you can see that the text element has changed accordingly so let's now talk about the conditional tab so currently we are within the conditional tab of the text element and oftentimes when we build apps responsively we'll go ahead and change the width or the height of a specific element based on the width of the page. So for example, there is a setting that says when current page width is, for example, a thousand, we can go ahead and change a certain property. So we can actually make the width, for example, 300 pixels if we wanted to do so. But this is just a general example of how you use conditions in order to make the certain element responsive based on the page width. And then lastly, let's now have a brief discussion of the elements tree. Now the elements tree within the upgraded responsive engine has more options than you do have in the old responsive engine. And particularly when you go ahead and right click on a certain element, you will see that you have the options to hide all children. And as you can see, the text element has been hidden and you again have the option to show all children. And as you can see now, the child element or the text element has been shown within this group. So those are basically some handy tools that you can use within the elements tree. So we have basically gone through a little bit of theory of the responsive engine but you'll no doubt understand it better when we go ahead and actually build the dashboard. So now that we have briefly discussed a little bit of theory, let's go ahead with actually building our responsive dashboard. Now, as we mentioned in the intro, we will be basically recreating the inner space zero code template. And in order to find this template, you can go ahead to zero code and then click on templates. And then here you'll be able to search for the template by typing in in a space and you'll be taken to the template page here. So let's go ahead and click on web demo to see exactly what we'll be building within this course. Now, once you here, click on admin because the admin dashboard is the dashboard that we'll be recreating. Now I'll go ahead and minimize this banner as well as this banner here. So as you can see, this is the page that we'll be recreating within this course. And the inner space dashboard basically has several tabs, but we are more interested in the overview tab, the users tab, as well as the content tab. These are the three tabs that we'll be building within this course. Now let's start with the overview tab. Now we basically have the task of recreating this dashboard from scratch. Now, an important disclaimer before we begin is that the final product that we'll be developing within this course may not look exactly the same as this template here. And that's due to several reasons. One, this dashboard was originally built using the old responsive engine. So the new responsive engine does behave a little bit differently in certain cases. Also, another point to mention is that there are different ways to achieve a certain thing within Bubble. So when you see me using a specific method in order to make the page responsive, that doesn't mean it's the only method. Perhaps you may know another method, or as you're busy practicing, you may find other alternative methods to achieve a specific result. Just know that there are multiple ways to achieve a certain thing. But for the most part, by the end of this course, we will basically build a similar dashboard. Now, when you go ahead and look at this dashboard, you may be a little bit frightened that how in the world are we going to build this dashboard responsively? Because 
when we go ahead and try to minimize the page, you can see that it's very responsive. So the menu now comes to the bottom and we can go ahead and scroll down to see more details. And now when we go ahead and increase the size of this window, you can see that the menu now pops up on the left hand side and the user can go ahead and use the menu accordingly. Now it may look a little bit frightening to figure out how exactly we're going to do this, but do not fret my friend, that's why we are here. We're gonna see how to build this dashboard responsively using the new responsive engine. Now in order to build apps responsively, you first have to mentally visualize how you're going to lay out all the specific elements. And the easiest way to do that is to mentally break down all the elements into certain blocks. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, for example, we can see that on this dashboard specifically, we have two main blocks. We have this block on the left-hand side, and this is where the menu is placed. And then we have another block on the right-hand side, and this is where the main contents are placed. Now that means that within our bubble app, we also have to create these two main blocks for our menu and for the main contents. So back again on this page, I'll simply go ahead and delete everything that we have done here. And then I'll enter the property editor of the page and we simply want to configure some settings. Now the first thing is to decide which container layout are we to choose from. So again, the fixed container layout is not responsive, so we're totally gonna ignore that. We're either gonna set it to a line, row, or column. Now remember that with row, everything is placed horizontally, and then with the column, everything is placed vertically. And then with align to parent, everything is placed on specific responsive positions. Now going back to our dashboard, we can see that these two main blocks are basically laid out horizontally or in a row. So we have the option of setting the page to a row container layout. Now we can go ahead and do that, but another option is the align to parent. Personally, I would like to use the align to parent option in this case. Now, the nice thing about the align to parent container is that we do have the option to choose which position we want to place the group based on the size of the page. Now, for example, the main contents block would be placed on the left center, but when we go to mobile, we wanna place it in the middle. So that's why for this specific example, I'm choosing to go with the option of align to parent because its properties will come in handy later on. Now, additional settings that we want to change for this specific page, would be the width for the UI builder. So I'll go ahead and change that to 1280. And then I'll change the minimum width to 320. And I'll go ahead and change the minimum height to let's try 1200 for now. And we'll see if we need more space as we go ahead. Now, the reason being I am setting the page width to 1280 is because 1280 can be evenly divided by 320 and 320 tends to be the smallest screen size for mobile devices and 320 times 4 equals to 1280. Now some people like to set the width to 12,000 instead but again there's no right or wrong method you can choose whatever works best for you. Now that we have nicely configured the page layout Let's start off by changing the color of our page to this background color here. Now the hex code of that background color would be this right here. Let me quickly insert it within this field. So it'll be EAE6E1 like that. So it's this nice brown as you can see here. And now we can go ahead and insert the two main blocks, one used for the menu on the left and the other one used for the main contents on the right. So starting off with the menu on the left, I'll go ahead and insert this group here. And then within the layout options, I'll make sure that it's placed on the left center like so. And then since a group is also a container, we'll need to go ahead and change the container layout. 
So when we go back to the page, you can see that within this group, everything is basically placed vertically, which means that we can use the column container layout, which is this one right here. And then for the height, we basically want this to fill in the whole height of the page. So I'll change the height from this many pixels to 100% like so. So obviously 100% will mean that it covers the whole height of the entire page. Now what about the width? It's currently set to 326. Let's leave it there for now. We'll see how we can change it a bit later. And now we can go ahead and add the second group which will be used for the main contents. Now again, we want it placed on the right hand side. And I'll basically change the color of this group to white so that we can easily see it. And I'll do the same to this group, but I'll change it to maybe gray, just so that we can nicely see what we're working with. Now let's go ahead and click preview to see how we are currently doing. And I'll go ahead and remove the debugger just so that we have the correct height of the page. And as you can see, we have the left hand side group nicely fitting the entire height of the page. And the main contents block is also nicely placed on the right hand side. But as you can see, the height is a bit too much. So maybe I can go ahead and reduce the height to let's try um, 800 for now. And we'll see how it works out. Okay, that's a bit better. We'll adjust it as we go. So going back to the template, we can see that the group that is meant for the main contents is nicely styled. It has a shadow and we can also see that the corners are nicely rounded. So let's go ahead and try to achieve the similar thing in our bubble app. So I'll go ahead and click on this group and I'll change it to main contents like that. And then I'll just change this to left menu, right. So going back to styling the main contents group, now I will set the background color to the correct hex code, which is FBFBF5, like that. And then for the roundness, let's try 20 and see how that looks. Okay, that looks fine. And then of course we have to add some styling. So I'll click on outset and then the horizontal offset, I'll select on minus two. Same thing for the vertical offset. And then I'll change the blur radius to 10. And then I'll go ahead and change the spread radius to two like that. And as you can see, we have nicely achieved the shadow that we're looking for. But I now want to actually change the actual box shadow color to something else. So I'll say 05, 05, 05, but it's a bit too dark. So I'll dial down the transparency to eight. And yep, that's okay for me. And now let's go ahead and change the width and height of this container or the main contents group rather. So I'll go ahead and Instead of making it fixed, let's see which container layout that we need to use. So as you can see, everything is basically aligned from top to bottom. So we're using the vertical alignment, which means that we need to choose on column. And then for the width, I will uncheck this checkbox so that it's not fixed. And then for the minimum width, I'll say 320. Since it's the smallest size that we want to reduce to, and then we want to maybe change the maximum width to 1100, like that. So do bear in mind that if you do not set the maximum width, then 
automatically by default the maximum width will be infinite that's why we see i and f there and that basically means that it will span across the entire page unless you set a limit so when we set a limit we can see that it will only spread until 1100 pixels like that and by setting a minimum width that means when this group reduces it will only reduce until 320 pixels and not any further so that's how this works and then now we want to change the height of this container or the main contents group so i would like it to fit not a hundred percent but at least 90 percent of the entire page so i'll click on this checkbox in order to make the element fixed height but instead of making it fixed pixels i'll change it to 90 percent like that so whatever the page height is this main contents group will only fill in 90 percent of the parent container in this case it would be the page and when we click to preview we can see that it's now looking a bit better and it's somewhat resembling what we have here now you will realize that when this screen is minimized you will see that what happens is that the menu on the left hand side disappears and the main contents group is placed in the middle like so and then the menu is right now positioned at the bottom of the page so we also want to achieve the similar result in our bubble app where the left hand side menu disappears when the screen reduces to a certain point now in order to do that let's go ahead and go back to our bubble app so the objective now is to make sure that this group is hidden when the page reaches a specific breakpoint now you may be wondering what is a breakpoint well a breakpoint is basically defined as the point at which a website's content and design will adapt in a certain way in order to provide the best possible user experience now to see an example of that let's go ahead and click on the responsive tab and here within the responsive tab you can see that we are basically given different screen sizes we have 320 pixels which is the smallest and this basically refers to mobile devices then you have 768 which would be perhaps a mobile device that is turned horizontally and then you have 992 which could be a tablet and then you have 12,000 which would be a desktop screen so now our job is to basically determine at which breakpoint or at which screen size do we want to hide this group on the left now let's just for example for now let's set it to 992 so that when the page is reduced to 992 pixels we want to go ahead and hide this left hand side group so in order to do that i'll go ahead and click on this group and then i'll go to the conditional tab and then here i'll basically say that when current page width is smaller or equal to 992 we want to go ahead and hide this element so i'll click on this element is visible and i'll leave the checkbox unchecked which means that this group will not be visible then an important thing that we want to do now is to go to the layout tab and then we want to click on collapse when hidden now this will mean that this group will not only disappear but it will no longer take up space on the screen when it is hidden and that's exactly what we want to do because we don't want to leave a gap when the group is hidden but rather we want to close that gap by clicking on collapse when hidden and as you can see now this group here has now taken up the space of the group that was previously there and now we want to make sure that this group will also be positioned in the middle because remember we have set it to be placed on the right center but rather we want to place it in the middle when it reaches that same breakpoint so we can go ahead to the conditional tab and then we can actually click on the same condition that was on the same group so i'll just go back here and then i'll copy this expression just so that we can develop a bit faster instead of repeating the same steps and then i'll click on alignment and then now we want to position it in the middle 
So let's go back to the preview page and let's see how this now works. So now you can see that we basically have this group on the left still visible. So I'll go ahead and minimize the page and let's see if it disappears as we have set it. And as you can see, that left hand side group has disappeared and it's not magic, my friends. It's just pure programming. And we can see that it's nicely responsive. And obviously later on in this course, we're going to now set the menu to be placed on the bottom as we have it on the original template. But for now, let's focus on the other groups. And now when we go back to enlarge our screen, you can see that we can now see the menu on the left hand side. So we have successfully configured that. But now what I want to draw your attention to is the color in the background. So when we go ahead and minimize the page, you will see that we have this two tone color where the main contents group is a certain color and is different from the color in the background. But when we go back to the actual template, you will see that we actually have one color all around. So we need to go back and edit our app. So to do that, let's go back to our app. So now in order to change the color of the background, we can go back and click on the main contents group. And then we want to go ahead and copy this expression. And then we want to go back to the actual page. So right now the property editor is for the actual page and we want to add a condition so that when the current page is at this breakpoint, we want to change the background color to the same color here. So I'll go back to appearance of the main contents group and then I'll basically copy the color and then I'll go back to the background page and set the same color like so. But another thing that we shouldn't forget is that this main contents group has its own styling and it has its own shadow. Now we want to remove the shadow of this group when the page hits the specific breakpoint. So we will select a property to change when true and we will click on shadow which will be this one here and we will click on none. So just like that this will remove every style setting that we have set for the back shadow style. So let's go back and see how this page now looks. So when I go back and minimize this page, you will see that now nicely everything is the same color and there's no difference between the background and the actual main contents group because now what happens is the background changes to this color here of the main contents group and of course we have removed the styling. So now this will nicely enable us to go ahead and edit the main contents group and it will look nicely on mobile devices. So let's go back to edit our app and now let's go ahead and see what we can do next. So you will realize that within the main contents group, we have certain elements. We have the title. We have some boxes here that are used to show some stats and we have also a repeating group of transactions. Now what you'll realize is that the main contents group will change in content obviously based on the selected menu tab. Now, when I click on users, you can see that now the content is different. And when I click on content, obviously the content of the main contents group will also be different. So we have to carefully think about how we will arrange this within our bubble app so that whichever menu tab is clicked, we will make sure that the main contents group is dynamic based on the selected menu tab. So we want to go ahead and hide or show that group based on the selected menu tab. Now, an option that we do have is to go ahead and hide the actual main contents group, but that means that we'll need to have the same number of main contents group as we have for the menu tab. Or another option that we do have is to basically have another group within the main contents group, which will hold the actual main content of the selected menu tab. Now, what that means is that Going back to the template, we can basically break down the overview contents as its own block. And we can also do the same for the users tab. 
So everything that you see here can be inserted with its own block or its own group. So what will happen is that when a certain menu tab is clicked on, we will show the overview block and we will hide the one that was previously shown. So if content is now clicked, we will obviously hide the block that was previously shown and we will show the contents block. Or in this case, we will show the content group. So this will make more sense when we go ahead and develop our app. So let's go back to our app and let's go ahead and create those three groups. Because remember in this course, we will only focus on the overview tab, the users tab and the content tab. So that means that we need three groups that we need to create within the main contents group. So to do that, I'll go ahead and add a group within this group here. And I'll go ahead and change the name to overview. So we will show this group only when the overview tab is clicked on. And then now in terms of its dimensions, we basically want it to have the same dimensions as the parent group. So I'll go ahead and set the minimum width to 320 and the maximum width to 1100. So let's go back to do that. Um, oh, right. Remember that we have to change the container layout and obviously we will change it to column because the contents are placed in a vertical manner. So going back to the dimensions, I will uncheck this checkbox and here I will click on 320 and then I will say 1100 like that. And then for the um, height, we can basically change it to 100% because we wanted to fill in the entire length of the main contents group. Now, when we go back to the property editor, just to show you that indeed this group is within the main contents group, we can basically click here to show all the other groups that are nested within. And you can see that we have group overview. Now, as we go along within this course, we will have other groups for the other remaining tabs, which will be for users and content. But for now, we are dealing with the overview group. So this group will be shown only when the overview tab is clicked on and it will be hidden when other tabs are clicked on. So hopefully that makes sense. But of course, it will be more clear as we go along. So this is basically just an example of how you can think ahead when developing things responsibly. So you have to think carefully how you lay out each and every element. But of course, the nice thing with Bubble is that even if you rely something later on, you can always go back to change it. But the more thoroughly you think about things in the beginning, the more easier it will be for you to continue to develop your own application. So now that we are within the overview group, we can go ahead and build our contents that are within this group. So again, we can see that we have the overview title and then we have these three blocks which are used for stats. And then we will need to add a repeating group to show the transactions. Now let's go ahead and start with the first one, which is the title. So to begin, I'll go ahead and click on the text element and add it within this group. And then here I'll go ahead and change the text to overview like so, but obviously we'll need to go ahead and change some styling. So I'll remove the style and I'll change the font to open sans. So let me just quickly click that. And then I'll type in open sans. And then for the weight, let's try Let's try 600 for now and let's see how that looks. All right. And then obviously we need to change the font size. So I'll go ahead and change it to 30 and let's make it pure black instead like so. And obviously we can see that this group is a bit large. Um, so let me just quickly go ahead and reduce its dimensions. So let me try to set the maximum width or the actual width to 200. Uh, that's fine. And maybe I can change the height to 50. I think that will be sufficient. That's that's OK. So as you can see now, it's touching the top border of the group a little bit too closely and on the side as well. So 
let's go ahead and edit the margins of this element. So for the top margin, I'll set it to 20 pixels. And then for the left margin, let me set that to about 50 pixels. Uh, that's that looks about good. Uh, let me just go quickly back to the template. Uh, yeah, that's that looks okay. That looks okay. Um, perhaps you can change the font size to maybe something a little bit bigger. All right. So another quick tip with Bubble, if you don't know already, is that you can actually go ahead and set your own styling. Um, and by that I mean, as you can see here, we have a drop down of text styles that are predefined within Bubble automatically. But you can also create your new style so that you don't have to set the same settings for each and every text element that you want to look similar to this one. So I'll click on create a new style and I'll say group title. So every time we want to use the same um, style for the group titles, we'll basically use this style right here. Uh, because remember, we have other groups uh, that we'll need to configure, such as users and contents. So we'll use the same style um, for each group title. So that's just a quick tip if you didn't know about that. Um, so let's now see what else we need to do. So we can see that within the overview tab, we can see that we have three blocks here. And these are basically laid out in a horizontal fashion, which means that we will need to add a row group. So let's go back to our bubble app and let's do that right now. So I'll go ahead and add a group and place it here. And then I'll name this group as stats like this. And then I'll click on the layout tab and then I'll make sure that I select the row container layout since we'll have the blocks laid out in a horizontal manner. So let's go ahead and change the dimensions of this group. So first of all, let me quickly go ahead and change the color so that we see a bit nicely what we are working with. So I'll just give it a light gray like that. That's fine. And then within the layout tab, I'll go ahead and uncheck this checkbox. And then I'll give it a minimum width of, let's say 320. And then as a maximum width, we want to limit it to perhaps a thousand. Let's see how that looks. Um, oh, I accidentally clicked on next. So let me click on make last. So yeah, by the way, um, this is another feature of the row element as well as the column element where you can basically choose if you want to make elements uh, the first in the list or maybe the next one in the list or the previous one in the list or, or you can make it last. So it works for any element within the row or the column. So that's basically a quick tip for you. And let's now see how our column looks in terms of its dimensions. Right. So we can see that it's a bit um, situated on the right hand side. So what we can do is situate it in the middle. So we can click on horizontal alignment centered. So this basically allows you to position an element um, either to the far left or the center or the right, or you can select on horizontal stretch. But obviously right now we just want to center it horizontally like that. So that looks okay, but it seems like it's a bit close to the text element here. So we'll go ahead and give it a margin. So let's go and click on, perhaps let's select on 10. Does that look okay? Looks okay for now. And another thing that we can do, uh, but just as an example, we have the padding options here. And basically this allow you to, as mentioned before, this allows you to control the spacing within the borders of the element. So just as a quick example, when we select on 10, you can see that within the border of this element, there's a 10 pixel spacing here. So this is within the border of the element. And as you saw that the margin controls the spacing 
outside of the border of the element. So if we go back to zero, you can see that it goes back to where it was, but when you give it a margin of 10, it now moves 10 pixels downwards because we're controlling the spacing outside the borders of this element. So that's just another quick tip for you to know the difference between margins and padding because in the beginning, we just showed an example of text, but this was a new example of the group element. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and set the height of this element. So it currently has a minimum height of 249. So perhaps we can give it um, a smaller height than that. Let's try um, one, 170 perhaps. Let's see how that looks. Okay, that looks fine. Yeah, that looks okay. Um, let's go back to preview just to see where we are currently. Okay, so that looks that looks okay. So here we will go ahead and insert our stats. But to me, it looks like the group is a bit too big. I don't know, it just looks like that to me. So I'll go ahead and maybe dial down the height to 160. And hopefully that will be a bit better. All right, that's okay. We'll work with that. But as you see, the text element has a bit um, is a bit thick. The weight is is a bit higher up. So I think we can go ahead and change the weight of this text element. So I'll click on Overview and remember that we have uh, a set styling which is called Group Title. So instead of removing the style, I'll go ahead and edit the style itself. So perhaps we can go ahead and change the weight to something higher. So let's try 700. Let's see how it looks. Okay, I'll go ahead and click preview. All right, that's, that's a bit similar. That looks better. All right, so now that we've done that, let's now move along to the group and go ahead and add our stats. So as you can see, we have three blocks here. So I'll go ahead and add a group to this group here. And we will later duplicate it um, two more times so that we have three groups in total. So for this group, I'll basically say it's stat number one, like that. And let's now vertically align it in the center like that. So this is the vertical alignment for the group because remember we are currently in a group that is uh, a row container layout. So within the row, we can go ahead and set the vertical alignment to either top aligned, centered, bottom aligned or vertical stretch. But right now we want it in the middle, so we select that. And then let's go ahead and change the container layout. So let's see which container layout we can use. We can see here that we have an element here, 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 and there. So I think the easiest way to go about this for now is to select on align to parent because we basically have four places, which is the top left corner, the top right corner, the bottom left corner, as well as somewhat the bottom center or the bottom right corner. But for this example, we will not be adding this horizontal line or this curvy line as you can see here, because we don't have the plugin within our particular app. So we don't have to worry about that. So for now, let's basically worry about this icon, that number and this text here. So that means we can go ahead and set the container layout to align to parent. And then we will change the appearance to something else just so that we can see it more clearly. I think white is fine for now. And then what about the width? So let's change the width to perhaps 300. And then um, I'll uncheck that. Uh, and obviously automatically it gives it uh, an infinite width. So let's limit it to perhaps 320. So that means it will only go as high as 320 and it will only go as low as 300 pixels. And then for the height, I think the height is okay for now. 
um, let's go ahead and style this group. So we can see that this block right here has curved up corners. So we'll also need to curve it up a bit. And we can see though that the border is a different color. So we'll have to change the, the color of the border as well. So I'll click on this group and then I'll click on the appearance tab. And let us now click on solid for the border style. And then let's try to add a roundness of 10 and let's see how that looks. Um, all right, is it okay? It looks okay, it looks okay. We'll just leave it at 10 for now. And then let's go ahead and change the width of our border to something a bit thick. So we can set it to two for now. And then for the border color, let's change it to something like E, A, E, 6, E, 1. That's the hex code for this border color here. But we cannot clearly see it now. So I'll just remove the background color of this group here. So let me just change the style to default group. So yeah, now you can nicely see the border color. And then we can also change flat color to none. And as you can see, the border is now visible since we have uh, changed the color of the background of the group as well as the color of this group as well. So we can go back to the layout tab and just double check. We have the minimum width and maximum width. So now that that's done, let's quickly duplicate this group. So I'll click on command D or well, I'm on Mac. So control D for, for windows. And then we can see that there are now three in total, but they are crowding each other's space as you can see here. So let's give them a little bit of breathing room. So we can go back to the main group stats and now we can change the container alignment. So right now the container alignment is set to left aligned. So that means each and every child element will squish to the left hand side, as you can see in this example here. But then if we change the alignment to something like center, we can see that they will squish to the center and they will leave some space on the left hand side as well as the right hand side or we can also choose right aligned and now they are all squishing to the right hand side but we can also choose space around where it will automatically give each and every element some space around them or we can choose on space between where the elements on the far edges closely connect with the borders of the actual parent group but then there is space between the rest of the elements, as you can see in this example here. So let's currently stick with space between and let's see how it will work out. So let's go back to the preview page and let's quickly update our page to see how we are doing. Right, so we have nicely added our stats uh, while the box is at least. And let's actually go ahead and minimize this to see how responsive these are. So I'll basically reduce the screen like that. And we can see that they are a bit responsive, but when we minimize it to a more mobile screen size, we can see that it's not really aligned properly. So we'll need to go back and adjust some stuff in order to align it responsibly. So one option that we do have is that when the screen is minimized, what we can do is that after a certain break point, we can make these groups jump to the next row to stack up on top of each other. So we will basically end up with these three groups here, but they will be nicely stretched across the page and will be centered in the middle. So to do that, we can to go use the actual and icons. click on the responsive tab to see at which break point we would like these elements to go to the next row. So currently we can see that when the page is at 901 pixels, I'm looking right here, we can see that they're a bit close to each other and then they begin to break. 
so what i will do is that i will set the breaking point to perhaps 982 so when the page is at 982 pixels or below we want to go ahead and make these groups go to the next row and then spin across the entire page so to do that i'll click on the ui builder and then i'll go ahead and add a condition for this group as well as the rest of the groups so i'll click here and then i'll say when the current page width is smaller or equal to what was the number again it was 982 again i'm looking here so 982 oops let me type that again 982 we want to go ahead and set the minimum width to um 90 percent if we were to set it to a hundred percent then it will span across the entire page but we just want it to span just a bit not a hundred so i think 90 is good so let's quickly go ahead and copy paste this expression to the rest of the groups so i'll name this stat 2 and then i'll define another condition paste that expression in and then set the minimum width to 90 percent like so and as you can see as we are busy making these changes the groups are nicely going to the next row like that and they are spanning across the page so let's also do the same for the last group which we will name stat number three I'll define a new condition, paste that in, and then I'll select on minimum width, basically repeat. Right. So let's now quickly see how the page now looks after we have made these changes. So I'll go ahead and minimize the page. And as you can see, now the groups are nicely going to the next row after a certain breakpoint is met. Right, so now the key thing is to go ahead and set these elements um, centered in the middle. So in order to do that, I will go to the responsive tab and then within the group stats, you will notice that the container has a container alignment of centered. Now what this will do is that it will basically center each and every child element within this group. So currently remember that it was set to space between but we want to center it when the certain breakpoint is met. So we can say when current page width is smaller or equal to 982 for this specific group we want to go ahead and change the container alignment to centered. Now let's go back and preview this page to see how that works out. Right, so I'll go ahead and minimize this page. And as you can see, the group has nicely centered everything in the middle. So that works perfectly. So now we don't have the elements randomly breaking. Now they are nicely responding to the page as it grows or reduces. Now, another thing that you'll notice is that currently the groups do not have any spacing between each other when they are set like this. So we'll go ahead and change the margins, especially for the group in the middle. So we will need to set the bottom as well as the top margin only when the certain breakpoint is met. So I'll enlarge and then I'll copy this expression and then I'll go to the group in the middle. Right, we actually didn't have to copy the expression, it's already there. So now we will set the top margin, excuse me, to, right, let's set it to 10 maybe, and then the same thing with the bottom margin, so that everyone has enough space. And then I'll update the page minimize the window perfect as you can see now everything is nicely spaced between each other right so the next thing that's left right now is to 
go ahead and actually add some stats within these boxes. So what I will do is go back to our template. And as you can see, we have an icon here. We have a number and some text. And as we previously discussed or agreed, we can use perhaps the align to parent container layout, which will give us nine quadrants or positions to work with, but we only need a few. So I'll go ahead and add a group within this quadrant or this position on the top left hand side corner. And this group will be used for the icon. So I'll just name it icon like that. And then perhaps we can go ahead and change its color. So the color that we want to change it to would be um, this color right here, a bit orangish, if I'm not too colorblind. Um, then we can go back to, all right, the appearance tab, and then remove the style. And let's currently click on flat color. And then we want to set the color to E, eight B to a B perfect so that's the color that we're looking for and as you see here the corners are nicely rounded so maybe we can change the roundness to eight maybe let's try that all right um so obviously it's not really looking like a square so we can actually go back and change the width and the height so so that everything's nice and even um but first of all let me change the container alignment to align to parent and then we're gonna center the the icon in the middle so i'll go back and change the width to 50 pixels um and 50 so 50 by 50 yeah that is a bit too much but i think we can actually increase the the size of our stat boxes uh, let's try yes so i currently clicked on vertical stretch so that it stretches across the whole entire parent group in this case it would be group stats so now we have nicely enlarged our stat box now i think the icon background is okay so Obviously, it's touching the corner a bit too much. So let's give it some space. So I'll give it a top margin of maybe 15. And then I'll give it a left margin of um, 15 maybe. Let's try that. Uh, let's go back to actually see how it looks like. That looks fine. Uh, let's now go back and actually add our icon. So we actually have a plugin that we can use to utilize the actual icons that we used in this template. So I'll go back and click on plugins and then I'll install the feather icon plugin. So I'll click on feather and install this icon here. And then I click on done and go back to the design tab. Now we can click on the feather icon, which is this one right here. And I'll just add it there. And I'll center it in the middle because remember the parent group is aligned to parent. So what is the icon again? Okay, it's, it's users. So let's go back and change the type to users. It would be this one right here. And then I'll change the color to pure white and then I'll just make sure that it's also a nice square so I'll click on I'll, I'll insert 35 yeah 35 by 35 hopefully that's good let's go back to preview right as you can see the icon is a bit too big and we can see that the lines are a bit too thin as well so I'll go back and change maybe the size to something a bit smaller let's try 30 by 30 and then i'll increase the stroke width to maybe 1.5 so not too thick 
but it should be thick enough. Let's see how that looks. Perfect. So now the stroke width is a bit better and the icon size is A-OK. -okay. So now let's go back and add our text element, which should read all users. Uh, so I'll go back here and then I'll add a text element and add it within this quadrant. Right, so within this text element, I'll type in all users. And then I'll remove the style. And then I'll change it to, well, I'll change the font to let's try Open Sans 600. And then let's click on Pure Black. And then, yeah, we can definitely center the text vertically like that. And I think the same way we gave the, the group element here a left margin of 15, I think we can also give this one a left margin of 15 so that everything is nicely aligned together like that. But obviously we'll also need to add um, or change the bottom margin. So let's try 15 as well. I think that looks okay. Let me quickly update this page. Yeah, that looks okay. But as you can see here, the U for users is in small caps. So let me just quickly change that detail. It's a minor thing. Um, really don't have to worry about that, but I'll just change it nonetheless. Right. So now the next thing to do is to add our text or the number. So I'll just actually duplicate this and then I'll change its position to the top right hand side corner and I'll change the name to number like that and I'll give it it said seven so I'll also change my to seven oops not y seven right and then obviously we'll need to change the font size so I think we can set it to let's try something big really really big okay not too big but big enough um hmm, that's that's a bit too big let's tone that down a bit okay let's center that in the middle and give it a, a weight of maybe 800 and that's a bit too thick so maybe 700 700 is okay and I'll give it a top margin of 15 like everyone else and actually we don't need the the bottom margin for this nor do we need the left margin um, it just took those settings from all users since we duplicated that um, let's now go back and click preview to see how we are doing all right, awesome stuff. So we can see that this is looking quite similar to what we have here. So let me actually minimize this to see how it looks on a mobile device. Yes, that looks nice. So we can see that the contents of the group also respond nicely. And that's also due to the fact that we use a line to parent because Although they are positioned at those specific points, they are responsive when the screen changes. So now what's left is to go ahead and change the remaining two boxes. So what we actually can do is to actually delete these two and then duplicate this one since we have already changed quite a bit on it. But then we should just remember that for the group in the middle we have this condition here that sets the bottom and top margin to 10 when it is at this specific breakpoint so i'll just delete this group as well as this one here and then i'll duplicate this one right so now this one is the new group and then it has a top margin of 10 when 
this condition is true and a bottom margin of 10 as well. So we're just redoing what we basically did before. And then this one is the new stat group number three. Right, so now our job is easy. We just have to edit these remaining elements. So looking at the template, we can see that this one has a different color. The background icon is a different color and it says annual plan. So I'll just copy that and change that to annual plan. Okay, maybe we can just increase the width to, uh, let's try 85. Okay, still not enough. Let's try 100. Right, that's better. And then let's change the hex code for this background icon to this purple-ish looking color. So the hex code for that would be triple A and then seven D B. Perfect. And then the icon is a dollar sign. So let's quickly change that as well. So I'll click on that and I'll type in dollar and click on dollar sign. And then lastly, let's copy monthly plan and then paste it here. We'll also give this a width of 100 pixels. Oops, not enough, maybe 120, perfect. And then let's change the color as well. So I'll go back to appearance. And then the hex code would be B77 E double nine, like that. Right, I forgot to change the number. So the numbers, so we have one and one. So I'll change this to one. And then just to be a bit different, let's change this to something else, maybe four. And then we can go back and preview our changes to see how we are doing so far. Perfect. So we can minimize the screen. And as you can see, everything is responding pretty nicely. Perfect. So we are pretty much on track. And I think we can just give this row a bit more space between um, itself as well as the text. So I'll click on the stats group and give it maybe a top margin of, let's try 20 and then we'll see how that looks. Right, that's a bit better. Then another thing that you'll notice is that when the screen is minimized, we have a big gap between uh, the word overview and the border of these elements. So we just want to quickly close this gap so that everything is aligned a bit better. So I will enlarge the window and then let's go back to the responsive tab. So what we want to do is that remember when these groups hit a certain breakpoint and they are aligned um, vertically like this. So we want to use the same breakpoint, which is 982 pixels to set a condition for this text overview element. And specifically, we want to change the left margin so that instead of 50, it should be a bit smaller. So let's try, let's try 30. Let's try 30. It looks okay here, but I'll go and update the page to see how it looks. And then I'll minimize it perfect so you can see that the word overview is aligned a bit better this time and another thing that you can actually do to see how your page looks is to basically click on these three dots well i'm using chrome so if you're using chrome the settings are quite similar and then you want to hover on more tools and then click on developer tools and this will basically open up a page that will show you how your page looks 
on different screen sizes. So we actually have different options. Right now we're on a Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. So our page basically looks like this. And then we can change it to iPhone Pro 12. Then you can see that our page currently looks like this. So that's another quick way to actually see how it looks like on a mobile device. If you want to see it on different screen dimensions. So that was just a quick tip if you didn't know about that. So I think for now we are currently done. So the next thing that we have to move to is to add the transactions text as well as the repeating group, but not forgetting these drop down buttons right here. So let's quickly go back. 